The chart that I used for sizing is available for free download on my Helen May Crochet YouTube channel Facebook group. It's in the group files. I just want to show a close-up of the sweater that I'm going to show you how to make on video tutorial. Just be aware that the sweater, I made my sweater sleeves a little bit longer, approximately an inch and a half longer. And I like that because you can fold the sleeves down and it keeps the hands warm. So you can decide if you want to have the longer sleeve size or not. This baby doll fits baby clothes size approximately three to six months of age. I show how to place the ribbon as a tie so it opens up. The dress is also has a separate video tutorial if you like the crochet dress and the baby bonnet also has a separate YouTube video tutorial. This is a beautiful cobble stitch pattern that I'm going to show you how to crochet and you're also going to learn how to make these little flower buds. This is called a small popcorn stitch and then it has little green loops in between each one and then on the back this is what the back of the sweater looks like so the flowers go all the way around. You're going to need your five millimeter crochet hook as well as a tapestry needle and a pair of scissors. The yarn I used is by Lion Brand Yarns, Pound of Love. Here's some information. You're only going to need one skein of this yarn. The color of this yarn is antique white. For the design, the little flower bud design, I'm using a light colored purple yarn. This is 100% cotton. I believe it's Lily and Sugar cotton. And then this one is I Love This Cotton, and I'm using a light green, trying to stick with pastel or lighter colors. You're also going to need your favorite ribbon. I'm using the same chart that I used for my crochet Easter Rabbit child sweater and I'm showing how to make this easier style beginner crochet sweater and I'm making it smaller for approximately six, three to six months of age is the size that I'm going to be making on video tutorial but if you want to change the sizes I show you how I use this chart to adjust the size of my crochet sweater. This stitch is called the cobblestone stitch and I'm going to be showing you how to crochet this stitch. I've already made the front panel, so I'm going to measure that for you so you can see the size of my front panel. And I've also made the two front panels. And I've made the sleeve. And then I've already taken one of the sleeves and sewed it together. So I'll show you how to sew the sleeve together once I've measured it for you. And I'm going to show you how to crochet this stitch while making the back panel. So all of these pieces are made the exact same way as the back panel. The only difference is you're going to, your starting chain is going to be different. So I'm going to show you the measurements for each of these panels and also I'm going to tell you what their starting chain was for them. On my chart it says that for a 6 to 12 month old you need about a 19 inch or smaller one would be an 18 inch front panel but for mine I measured 19 and a half inches across so that when it folds over my sweater will measure approximately eight and a half inches across. And if you double that, that would be about approximately 17 and a half inches. So that's how I measured mine. My crochet model also helped me for sizing. So you can see how I measured from the armpit down. And this is how my front panel will fit 
around a baby. And this baby doll measures approximately three to six months of age for baby clothes. And the length of mine was about five and a half inches. So this is the bottom of the sweater. And I started with a chain of 66 for this portion of the crochet sweater. So a chain of 66. The two front panels for the right and the left side are both made the exact same way. I started with a chain of 18 and I'm going to give you the measurements for them. Four and a half inches for the width, two inches for the length. And again, the starting chain for these is a chain of 18. For the sleeve, I started with a chain of 30. And I'm going to give you the measurement for this one. It's 8 inches in width, 6 and a half inches in length. And I'm going to be folding it in half and sewing along the edge. I've already made one of them. So you can see how long you want your sleeve. And again, this starting chain was a chain of 30 for this one. So whatever panel that you're working on first, you're going to start with that number of chain. I'm going to be making the back panel with you on video tutorial. So the first thing you're going to do is take your yarn and fold it over on itself to form a loop. Then take your crochet hook, put it right through the loop, Hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and thumb. Then you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through that loop for a slip knot. Then go ahead and pull on that loose yarn end and cinch the loop around the crochet hook. Now you're going to make a chain. I'm only going to show four of them on video tutorial for you. But for the back panel, I'm going to make mine a chain of 40. So yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for one, two, three, four. So if you're making the back panel with me, go ahead and chain 40. The bottom of the sweater that forms the chest, you start with a chain of 65. The left and right front panels you'll start with a chain of 18. The sleeves start with a chain of 30. And again, the back panel is a chain of 40. This is what my chain looks like after I finished. Again, I made a chain of 40. Then, you're going to take your crochet hook. You're going to go into the second chain from the crochet hook, or a second chain from the hook. You're going to bring up a loop. You have two loops on the hook. You're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through both loops for a single crochet. Then we're going to make a treble crochet into the next stitch. So this is the next stitch. You're going to yarn over twice. You're going to go into the next stitch. You're going to bring up a loop. You have four loops on the hook. You're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through two loops. You have three loops remaining. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through two more loops. Then you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside do down, and go through the two remaining loops. You just completed a treble crochet. In the next stitch, you're going to make another single crochet. And then in the next stitch, you're going to make another treble crochet. Yarn over twice. Go into the next stitch. Bring up a loop. 
four loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through two. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through two. And then yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the remaining two. And that's basically all you do for the cobblestone stitch. Single crochet into the next stitch. Treble crochet into the next stitch. I'm just going to do a couple more with you so you can get the hang of making these stitches, but it's that simple. So single crochet into the next stitch. Treble crochet into the next stitch. And you're going to repeat this all the way to the end and then come back and I'll make the last couple stitches with you and help you turn your work. Now I'm just going to make another set with you and you can kind of watch my hands as I crochet. People have different methods of holding the crochet hook and the yarn. doesn't make it wrong as long as you get the same results in your crochet work. So go ahead, finish making your stitches all the way across to the end, and if you turn over your work, you can see the cobblestone appearance that you're creating. Now I just finished a single crochet and I have two stitches left. I'm going to make a treble crochet into the next stitch. And then a single crochet into the last stitch. Now you're going to chain one, turn your work, and you're not going to work into this first stitch beneath your chain one. You're going to go into the stitch right next to it, which should be directly over the treble crochet of your previous row. And you're going to put a treble crochet directly over the previous row's treble crochet. So yarn over twice, go into that next stitch, bring up a loop, and make your treble crochet. Then you're going to go into the next stitch over, which is the single crochet from the previous rows, single crochet, bring up a loop, and make a single crochet. And you're just going to keep repeating again all the way across. All of your treble crochets will be directly over your previous rows, treble crochet. And then your single crochets will be directly over your previous row's single crochet. And then you just keep repeating this pattern until you get the size that you want for your crochet sweater. I've reached the end of my second row. I have two stitches left. I'm just going to work these last two stitches with you. I just finished a single crochet. I'm going to make my treble crochet into the next stitch. I'm 
And again, you should end with your single crochet. Then you're going to chain one and turn your work and then repeat. So you're going to make a treble crochet into the next stitch, which is directly over the previous row's treble crochet, which makes it easy. Then a single crochet into the next stitch, which is the previous row's single crochet. And then you just keep repeating until you have the length that you want. So this back panel is going to be two inches in length, which will be the same size as your front right and left front panels. They're going to be the same size. So it should be a couple more rows. I just completed my fourth row and it measures two inches. When you're finished with your last row, you go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring enough yarn through to bury into your work. My back panel measures 10 and a half in width, and then you have 2 inches in length. Now before you continue on, make sure you have all of your pieces. You have your bottom front panel, which will fold over in the front. This piece starts with a chain of 65. Then you have your right front panel and your left front panel. These both start with a chain of 18. You need your two sleeve panels. I've already sewn one of them into the sleeve. This one starts with a chain of 30. And then once you've made it, you can go ahead and fold it in half. Then you just take your tapestry needle, put it onto the long end that you left for sewing, or get the same colored yarn. Take the two edges, make sure that your right side, whatever side that you want showing, is folded towards the inside, and then the wrong side is facing you. Honestly, I have a hard time telling either side would work as the right side or wrong side. Then you just take your tapestry needle and just sew the edge together. Just go back and forth all along the edge, sewing the sleeve together. And then here is what your sleeve will look like when you're finished. So now you should have all of the pieces for your sweater at this point. Go ahead and set all of the pieces aside except for the bottom portion of the sweater that will go under the arms. So your sleeves are going to be going to the side like this. We're going to be working with this bottom portion first. We're going to make the pretty design across the center with the little flower buds. So go ahead and take this panel first and I'm going to show you how to make that. So I'm using this beautiful light green pastel green color and you're going to take your panel you have the front the right side facing you the wrong side will face down then you're going to take that top right corner take your crochet hook and go into the first stitch You're going to hook the new color, yarn, bring up a loop, go ahead and chain one, then you're just going to turn your work down 
and tie a knot. You're going to carry your loose yarn end with you as you crochet. So you just leave it to the side and you're going to go behind it as you crochet. So you're going to go into the first stitch which would be the next stitch over and this should be your treble crochet stitch from the previous row. You're going to go behind your loose yarn end with your crochet hook. You're going to bring up a loop with your new color and you're going to make a single crochet. Then you're going to go into the next stitch and make another single crochet. And now you're going to make a chain of eight. One, whoop, don't grab your loose yarn end. So you're going to make a chain of eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. After you make your chain of eight, you're going to go into the next stitch over. behind the loose yarn end, bring up a loop and make your single crochet. Then you're going to go into the next stitch over, make a single crochet. Next stitch over, make a single crochet. One more stitch over, make a single crochet. Then you can make your chain of eight loop. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then you're going to go into the next stitch over and make your single crochet. Then you're just going to keep repeating next stitch, a single crochet, next stitch, a single crochet, and then in the third stitch, make your single crochet and then chain of eight. Then go into the next stitch over to make your single crochet and repeat all the way across to the end and then come back. You're creating these little green chain loops that will hang down the front of the sweater. I just finished my last loop. Now I'm going to go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. And this is what my loops look like all across the front. Now you're going to take your work and you're going to turn it around because now you're going to work with the wrong side facing you and you're going to be folding the loops down towards the front as you crochet with your new yarn and make the little flower buds. Now you're going to take your crochet hook and you're going to go into that first stitch that you made with the green yarn. You're going to hook the new colored yarn, whatever color yarn you want for your little flower buds. You're going to chain one. Then you're just going to turn your work down and tie a knot to secure your new yarn. We'll bury these loose yarn ends later. I'll show you how to do that. 
Then you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch over. You're going to make a single crochet. You're going to pinch the loop that you created with the green yarn and make sure that it's folding towards the front. Make a single crochet into the next stitch over. Then you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch over. Then you're going to make your little bud. So you need four more single crochet into the same stitch. That way you have a total of five single crochet into the same stitch. So I have five single crochet into the same stitch. Now you're going to lift up your crochet hook to make a loop. Take out your crochet hook, go into that first single crochet that you created in that stitch. So the first single crochet that you created in the same stitch. Then grab that loop, cinch down the loop around your crochet hook and bring the loop through that first single crochet. Then you're going to take your crochet hook, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, and make a single crochet. Then you can see how it creates a little bud on the front, which is what you want. And you want these little buds to fall in between your green loops. So I'm going to make one more with you. I'm going to make a single crochet into the next stitch. Then I'm going to make a single crochet into the next stitch. Then I'm going to make five single crochet into the next stitch for my next balloon. Then I'm going to go into my first single crochet that I made in this same stitch, grab the loop, bring it through the first single crochet, then I'm going to go into the next stitch over and make a single crochet. You're going to repeat this all the way across to the end. And this is what your work will look like on the front. So you have your little rosebuds and then the leaves in between. Or flower buds. This stitch is also referred to as the small popcorn stitch. So I just finished my last stitch. So I'm going to go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over. And again, you just pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. This is what the front should look like when you're finished. Now you're going to take your tapestry needle and you're going to bury your loose yarn ends. So go ahead and take each of your loose yarn ends 
you just put it right onto your tapestry needle and you're just going to weave it through the area that you have the same colored yarn. What I like to do also is just to go back through and then again I just bury it back through just kind of secures it. Then you can take and trim the loose yarn end. And you want to do that with each of your loose yarn ends. Now you're going to take your right and left front panels. You can see that I've already buried my loose yarn ends. Then you're going to take, and this is the portion of the sweater that we already did our rose or flower buds on. So you're just going to take the front panel, one of the sides, fold it over, and you're going to line up your panel along the side. And put place it right at the base of your green portion. And then you take your tapestry needle with the same colored yarn as the main color of your sweater and you're just going to take and hook the portion right beneath the green portion with your tapestry needle. Make sure you leave enough of a loose yarn end for burying into your work. Then take your tapestry needle and go into the bottom stitch of the front panel. Go ahead and tie a knot. And then you're just going to take your tapestry needle and you're going to take a little bit of the portion of the bottom portion of the sweater panel right beneath the green yarn. And then you're just going to go up into the bottom portion of the front panel. And you're just going to sew it to the bottom portion of the sweater just like this. And then when you reach the end, come back and I'll show you what to do next. So I've reached the end. Now I'm going to take my tapestry needle and just go right through to the front of the sweater. And then you just want to sew across going into the front panel on the back and then come back through to the front and just sew it back across. This is what mine looks like after sewing across and it's secure. Go ahead and turn over your work and then just tie a knot and then bury your loose yarn ends and you're going to sew on the other side panel the exact same way. So here's the one side and then you're just going to take the opposite side and sew it on the exact same way on the opposite side. Now that you have your front panels sewn on, you're going to take your sleeve and you're going to find which side you want to have for the open portion of the sleeve and the seam portion that you sewed is going to go down. So make sure that you have that seam portion on the bottom and then line it up with your sweater then you're going to take and fold that flap of the sweater over and line up that portion of the sleeve and make sure that the sleeve is in front of your green and flower buds. Then you're just going to take 
and start from the bottom where the seam is. So make sure you have the seam lined up with the bottom portion of the front panel. And then take your tapestry needle and go into the bottom portion of the paddle and the sleeve. Then you're going to take and sew the edge of the front panel to the sleeve and you can go ahead and tie a knot. Make sure you leave enough of a loose yarn end. Then just take and sew the edge of the front panel to the sleeve. Make sure you grab the top portion of the front panel. Then you're going to go back down And then when you reach the bottom again, go ahead and tie a knot with your loose yarn end. And then cut the yarn, leaving enough for a loose yarn end. And then go ahead and bury your loose yarn ends. So this is what my sleeve looks like. And you have a little bit above, which is fine. We haven't made the shoulder panels yet. I'll be showing you how to make those later. Go ahead and sew the other sleeve on the exact same way. Now we're going to make the back panel. Sew the back panel on. The first thing you're going to do is take your back panel and lay it down onto the wrong side. We have the wrong side up so the rosebuds are facing away from you. Go ahead and lay the back panel down and then you're going to sew it in place. So you're going to take your tapestry needle with the same colored yarn and you're going to sew it in place the exact same way that you did for the front panels. So you can see how I'm going right beneath the green portion. And then I'm going to go right back to where I started to tie a knot. And then you're going to sew the back panel in place just like you did for the front panels. and then come back. I'm just going to show you how I crocheted, I mean, sewed mine in place a little bit. So I'm going down right beneath the green portion and then back up through the bottom stitch of the back panel. And then sew it all the way across and then go across the front the same way you did for the front panels. Now you're going to make your two shoulder pieces. These are going to start with a chain of eight and then they're going to measure three and a half inches when you're finished. Now you should have your sweater looking like this. You have the two sleeves sewn on and then the back panel is sewn on. Now we're going to we're going to sew on the shoulder portion. So you're going to take your shoulder pad that you created. You're going to put your tapestry needle onto the long end that you left for sewing or just get the same colored yarn. You're going to take the shoulder piece. You're going to have the front side of your sweater facing you. 
take the shoulder piece and line it up with the sleeve and the top portion of the front panel and then you're just going to sew it in place you're just going to go back and forth and sew it to the front panel once you reach the end you're going to go right back towards the sleeve. Once you reach the sleeve, go ahead and fold up the panel, the shoulder panel. Then you're going to take and lay the shoulder panel on top of the sleeve. Then you're going to line up the shoulder panel with the sleeve. And you're going to make sure that it's going to all line up with the back panel as well. So you're going to take and what you may do is go ahead and take a little bit of yarn put it onto your tapestry needle take the sleeve portion and that back panel and sew those portions together. You can go ahead and tie a knot too. Then you can see how the inner circle is going to be with the back panel, the shoulder panel, and the sleeve. Then just take and sew everything together, the sleeve to the back panel, the shoulder panel to the sleeve, and just sew everything into a circle until the sleeve is completely sewn in place with the shoulder panel, the back panel, And it's going to form a complete circle around the sleeve when you're finished. And you're going to sew the other sleeve on the exact same way. This is what your sleeve shoulder pad will look like on the outside portion of the sweater after you've sewn it to the sleeve. Then you're ready to sew the shoulder to the back panel. So after you finish sewing the inner portion all around then you're just going to take and line up the shoulder pad to the back panel make sure you don't sew your sleeve to the shoulder panel and the back panel so this is what it looks like on the inside as I'm sewing the shoulder to the back panel so you can see how I have the right sides together as I'm sewing. The wrong side is facing me and I'm careful not to sew my sleeve to the shoulder panel or the back panel. And then I finish sewing this last piece of the shoulder panel to the back panel. And then like I said the shoulder panel on the opposite side is sewn on the exact same way. And then just bury all of your loose yarn ends when you're done. This is what the shoulder panel looks like on the right side when I'm finished. You can see how it forms a little neck portion. So now you just go ahead and finish the opposite shoulder pad the exact same way. 
So again, I'm just going to start you out. You take your shoulder pad, lay it down next to the shoulder of the sleeve or the end of the sleeve and then you just go right through the top portion of the front panel and just show, sew the shoulder panel right to the front panel. Then I go right back towards the sleeve with my tapestry needle as I'm sewing. Then you can take and fold the panel over and then you're ready to sew around the sleeve with the back panel and the shoulder panel and just sew it into a circle. Then after you finish sewing all along the circle then you're ready to sew the shoulder panel to the back panel just like you did for the opposite side and then you're careful not to sew the sleeve to the back panel and the shoulder this is what my sweater looks like after sewing on the shoulder pads and then on the back, this is what the back of the sweater looks like. Then you just take your favorite ribbon. Mine, I cut 17 and a half inches long each. So then I just tied one of the ribbons to the top of the right panel. On video, it looks like the left. So the front opening. I just tied a ribbon to the front here and I'm going to show you how I did that on the opposite side. So I took my ribbon and I came up from the wrong side to the, the right side. Then I went over a couple of stitches back down into the wrong side. Then I took and tied a knot so I tied it three times That just gives it a room in the knot so it won't come undone. So you have three knots tied there. Then you just take the short end of the ribbon and just cut it about half a centimeter at an angle. I'm going to trim mine a little bit closer. Then you just take your ribbon, bring it right back through to the front, and then you have your ribbon for tying a bow on this front of the sweater. Then you can take and trim the front of the bow to the length that you want after you've tied your bow. Now for the edging around the neck, you're just going to take your crochet hook. You're going to go right into the top corner of the front panel. You're going to take and hook your yarn. 
Make sure you leave enough of a loose yarn end for tying a knot. Then you're going to chain one and go ahead and tie a knot. Then you're going to make sure you hold your loose yarn in because you're going to bury it as you crochet. Go ahead and make a chain of three. One, two, three. That's going to count as your first double crochet. Then in the next stitch you're going to make another double crochet. So yarn over, go into the next stitch over, go behind your loose yarn end, bring up a loop. You have three loops on the hook. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through two loops. Two loops remaining. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through those two remaining loops. Then you're going to make a double crochet into every stitch around to the opposite side around the neck. So one double crochet into every stitch until you reach the opposite side with the other ribbon. Then when you finish your last stitch on the opposite side Go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. This is what the sweater looks like after you place it onto the baby. And this is size, this baby doll is a model for a baby size approximately three to six months of age. For the sleeves, mine, I made them a little bit longer. You can always roll the cuff up. The reason I have mine a little bit longer is because the sleeves can go down and keep the hands warm. But if you're making yours and you want yours a little bit shorter, you can make yours a little bit shorter if you want. And again, here's the other side of the sweater. And then the back. This is what the back looks like. There's a separate video tutorial for the bonnet, the baby bonnet, as well as the crochet baby dress and the baby booties. Thank you.